Hi, and welcome to Using Rulers. In the last section, we learned about using vectors. In this section, we are going to go over some of the ruler tools in Clip Studio Paint. For this section specifically, we're going to cover the ruler tools that are not perspective rulers. Perspective rulers will be covered in detail in the next section. In this section, though, we'll be learning about the basic rulers, like linear, curve, and figure rulers. We'll also learn about the special rulers, like concentric circles and parallel lines. Then we'll learn about the symmetry ruler, and also how to use the streamline tools and saturated line tools to create other special looks. In this first video, we're going to learn about the basic rulers. This includes the linear, curve, figure, and guide rulers, as well as the ruler pen. This includes the linear, curve, figure, and guide rulers, as well as the ruler pen. Now, many of these rulers have an equivalent tool in the Direct Draw subtool group, but personally, I like to use rulers instead of the straight line tools, because then I can have a more organic feel to the inking. Now, many of these rulers have an equivalent tool in the Direct Draw subtool group, but personally, I like to use rulers instead of line tools, because then I can have a more organic feel to my inking, and use pen pressure to get thick and thin parts of my line. That's one of the advantages that rulers have over the line and shape tools. Anyway, let's get started. Let's start off with an open canvas we can play with these rulers on. Dimensions and DPI don't really matter right now, so use whatever size you feel comfortable with. To access the ruler tools for all of the videos in the next two sections, first select the figure tool from the toolbox. For this video, we'll select the ruler group of subtools. For this video, we're going to learn to use the first four tools and the guide tool. Let's start off by selecting the linear ruler tool. Next, we'll go to our canvas and click to add a starting point. Make sure to hold down the mouse button. Now, we'll drag until we have the ruler at the length and angle we want it, and we can release the mouse button to complete our ruler. Now we have a line on our screen, and it will probably show as green unless you've changed the ruler preferences in your program. This line we made acts just like if you had a ruler and you held it to a piece of paper so you could draw a straight line. If we select one of our pen tools and draw near the line, you'll see that we have a straight line that follows our green ruler line. If the drawing tool you selected isn't snapping to the ruler, Make sure that the Snap to Ruler icon in the command bar is active. Most of the time, ruler problems come from not having the snapping turned on. Now, let's talk about the Curve Ruler. The Curve Ruler has some options we can select down here in the Tool Property Palette, as you can see. For instance, this first icon turns this into a polyline straight line ruler. If we select it and then click, 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 and double click to end our line, you'll see that we have a zigzag ruler made of a few segments of straight lines. But we can also use the curve ruler to make rounded lines, kind of like having a set of digital French curves. There are three different options for how to make curves, and each one draws a little differently. Personally, my preference is the spline option, which is the second icon here in the tool property palette for this tool. To make a spline curve, we'll click to start our ruler. Then we'll click again where we want our first curve. As we move the cursor after our second click, you can see that the line curves. Another click will put down another control point for another curve. When we've finished, we double click to end the ruler. You also have the option of quadratic bezier, which works kind of the same as the spline, but as you can see, instead of the next control point creating the middle of our curve, instead it creates a handle that our curve then bends relative to it. You can also use the cubic bezier. To use this option, click to start the ruler. Then, when you click for your second point, if you just click and move, you'll create a straight line. But if you click and hold down while dragging, you will create a curve. By the way, if you need to edit a ruler after you've created it, you can use the Operation Object tool. Click on the ruler. Then, just as with vectors in the previous section, 
The ruler can be changed and then used with one of the drawing tools of your choice. Next, we'll learn about the figure ruler. The figure ruler allows us to draw rectangles, circles, and polygons easily. If we select it, you can see, of course, that there are some options in the tool property palette. Let's start off with the rectangle. These are very easy to use, just like using the shape tools in the Direct Draw tool group. To draw your shape, simply click and hold down while dragging. Once you've finished, release the mouse button. If the Adjust Angle After Fixed box is checked in the tool property, then you will be able to rotate the ruler after it's created. Here you'll see the Adjust Angle After Fixed checkbox. So if we choose the Ellipse option under Figure, we will of course create a circle. But let's take a look at the Polygon Figure option. This is a great ruler because it's pretty versatile if you know where to look for the options. Click on the icon that looks like two wrenches in the bottom right corner of the Tool Properties palette to open the Subtool Details. Now, click on Figure in the left-hand side. You'll see that you have the same options of Rectangle, Circle, and Polygon, but there's another slider here under those options. This slider allows us to change the number of vertices the Shape Ruler has. So, if we set it to 6 and then make our ruler, we'll get a hexagon. But if we set it to 3 and make our ruler, we get a triangle instead. You can make more complex polygons with this option. Okay, let's close the subtool details and talk about the ruler pen. This tool, again, makes a ruler, but it makes a ruler out of whatever you draw with the tool. So, we can make a shape like this, or maybe write a letter, and we'll have a custom-made ruler. As you can see, if we select a drawing tool, we can have it snap to this ruler and follow what we drew. Finally, let's talk about a special sort of ruler called the guide. To make a guide, select the tool, and then choose the location of the guide. Click and drag, then release to create a guide. Guides are just that, they're guidelines. They can only be horizontal or vertical. So even if we try to drag one out diagonally, it will only be horizontal or vertical. Usually, I use guides for positioning things all in the same line, but they also make for a great quick horizontal or vertical ruler since the drawing tools do snap to them. In this video, we have learned about the linear, curve, figure, pen, and guide rulers.